Hi, this is Sudeep and I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with StatPro. From the last session, we started learning about the local axis system of members in StatPro. We learned that though the local x axis could be precisely defined from the start node to the end node, the default uh, orientation of the local y and local z axis cannot be precisely defined merely from the information that the axis system needs to be mutually perpendicular to each other and that the right hand thumb rule needs to be satisfied. We would need one additional information to identify the default a configuration of the local y and local z axis. Now, if you do not understand what I am talking about, then please do visit my last session by clicking on the link above that is appearing on the screen right now. Okay, but before we go forward uh, for further explanation on this topic, please do take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel. And if you are an existing subscriber, do like the video because I guess you are probably already extracting a lot of value out of this series. So do please hit the like button. In the last session, we have learned that if the local x-axis is pointing out of the screen towards you, any of the configurations of local y and local z would be valid. Where the red axis represents the local y-axis and the green axis represents the local z-axis. So what should be the default configuration of local y and local z axis provided that the local x axis is pointing out of the screen towards you? Well, there is no simple answer that covers all the situation and we have to consider this question case by case. Let us start by considering the case of members whose local x axis are oriented parallel to the direction of the global x axis. So what we see on the screen is the global axis system where the global x-axis is represented in the blue color as gx, global y-axis is represented in red as gy, and the global z-axis is represented in green as gz. You need to have a clear idea on the global axis system and global planes to understand this. Now, let us consider two nodes. One and two which resides in the xy plane or any planes parallel to it. Let the member be defined from node 1 to node 2. This member would be parallel to the global x-axis as the end nodes are specified in the global xy plane. Because of the fact that the local x-axis of the member would be defined from the start node to the end node, the local x-axis will be directed from node 1 to node 2 and would be parallel to the global x-axis. In case there is a confusion on this, please visit the last episode by clicking on the link that is appearing right now for a detailed understanding. In this case, the default or the beta zero configuration would be defined by placing the local y-axis parallel to the global y-axis like this. Now that we know the positive direction of the local x-axis and local y-axis, the positive direction of the local z-axis can be determined by the right-hand thumb rule. Again, I have explained the right-hand thumb rule in details in the last episode, so please refer to that if you have a doubt on the same. So now, the complete local axis system configuration in the default or the beta zero configuration has been, has been determined for this member whose local x-axis is parallel to the global x direction. So what would happen if the same pair of nodes has the member defined from node 2 to node 1 like this? Well, let us see. Again, as we have learned, the local x axis will be defined from the start node to the end node 1 and thus will be defined parallel to the global x axis but its direction would be opposite to the positive direction of the global x-axis. Again, the local y-axis in the default condition or the default orientation is placed parallel to the global y-axis like this. Now, as per the right hand thumb rule, this determines the direction of local z-axis like this. 
So this is our beta zero configuration of the local axis system where the local x axis is parallel but opposite in direction to the global x axis. Now let us verify whatever we have learned in Stat Pro. Let us create two pairs of nodes, one and two, with coordinates 0, 0, 0, and 5, 0, 0, respectively. And let us create another pair of nodes, 3 and 4, with coordinates 0, 5, 0, and 5, 5, 0. Now let us create two members that would be connecting these two pairs of nodes. But before we do that, let us switch on the node numbers by pressing the hot key. To understand more about the hot keys to display the node number and the beam numbers, you can visit the session by clicking on the link that is appearing on your screen right now. So let us now create the beams with add option, add beam option, and let us create our first beam from node 1 to node 2, and our second beam from node 4 to node 3. Let us switch on the beam numbers as well. So our beam number 1 is located from node 1 to node 2, and our beam number 2 is located from node 4 to node 3. Now both of these beams are parallel to the global x-axis. So this represents the case that we have, we had just discussed. So now if we can display the orientation of the local axis system of both this member by pressing shift plus O, we see that the local x-axis for beam number one is pointing from node one to node two as expected, and the local y z local y-axis is parallel to the global x-axis and the global z-axis is also parallel to the local z-axis as we had just discussed. Similarly, for the other beam number two, which has been created between node four to node three, we have the local x-axis pointing from node four to node three as expected. Local y is still parallel to the global y-axis as we have discussed and the local z-axis is parallel to global z but is positive direction is opposite to the positive direction of the global z-axis. So this resembles exactly what we had concluded from our discussion. Now let us consider the two nodes such that the member connecting the two nodes is parallel to the global y-axis. Let the member connect from node 1 to node 2. So the local x-axis is defined from node 1 to node 2 like this. Thus, local x-axis will be parallel to the global y-axis and both of them will have the same positive direction. In this case, the default of the beta zero condition requires that the local z-axis be set parallel to the global z-axis like this, such that the positive direction of both the local z and the global z are in the same direction. Now that we know that the direction vectors of local z-axis and local x-axis, the local y can be obtained by the cross product of local z to local x vector. Using the right and thumb rule, we identify the local y in this direction. You need to remember the schema that I have discussed in details in the last episode. In case you are confused, please visit the last episode. Thus, the local y will be identified as being parallel to the global x, but the positive direction of the local y and global x will be in the opposite direction. Now consider the same member to be defined between nodes 1 and 2, as we have just seen, but on this occasion, let 2 be the start node and node 1 be the end node. Thus, the local x-axis of the member will be aligned parallel to the global y-axis, but in this case, the positive direction will be 
opposite to each other like this. Thus, the local z-axis, again in this case, would be aligned in the same positive direction as the global z-axis. Again, we have identified both local x and local z. As part of the schema that we had discussed in the last episode, we can identify the local y-axis using the right-hand thumb rule like this. So we have identified the beta zero configuration of the local axis system for a member which is parallel to the global y-axis. So now we are back to the model that we had used to validate the case when the local x-axis of the member was parallel to the global x-axis. Now we will use the same model to validate our current discussion for members where the local x-axis of the member is parallel to the global y-axis. So let us create our first member, which we would create from node 1 to node 3. The local x-axis is parallel to the global y-axis and as expected is pointing from node 1 to node 3. The local z-axis is set parallel to the global z as per the beta 0 requirements. Thus, the local y-axis is identified as being parallel to the global x-axis, but the positive directions are opposite. Now, let us create our second vertical member from node 4 to node 2. And as expected again, the local x-axis would be parallel to the global y-axis and it would be pointing from node 4 to node 2. As part the beta 0 requirements, the global z would be parallel to the local z. Thus, the local y-axis would be identified using the right-hand thumb rule to represent the cross product from local z to local x such that the local y-axis and the global x-axis have the same positive directions. So we can see that our discussion of our members with the local x-axis being parallel to global y-axis are validated. So today we have learned about two cases about the beta zero configuration of the local axis system. One, when the member is parallel to the global x-axis and two, when the member is parallel to the global y-axis. Now we started this chapter by stating that the two conditions that the axis needs to be mutually perpendicular to each other and that the right hand thumb rule needs to be satisfied is not enough to determine the beta zero configuration of the local y and local z axis and that we would need an additional uh, condition. So that condition is provided by the fact that when the member is parallel to the global x axis x axis then the local y of that member is set parallel and in the same direction of the global y axis and for the other case when the member is parallel to the global y the local z of that member is set parallel to the global z axis so i hope you enjoyed the session very much today. If you have and if you had derived value out of this session, please do hit the like button so that this content reaches out to many more who would be reach looking out for similar contents. So see you in the next one. Till then, bye.